We turn our attention now to tonight's COVID-19 update where Jamaica reported 26 new cases of COVID-19 and two fatalities on Wednesday, according to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Now, this increases the total cases of COVID-19 since the start of the pandemic to 128,950 and the death toll to 2,901. The country also recorded 83 new recoveries, increasing the total of recovered persons now to 81,671. Now, of the newly reported cases, there were 13 females and 13 males, ranging in age from 5 months to 75 years. In tonight's COVID-19 parish breakdown, St. James recorded seven cases. Clarendon recorded six cases. Kingston and St. Andrew recorded five cases. St. Anne recorded three cases. St. Catherine recorded two cases, while Hanover, Manchester and Westmoreland recorded one case each. Becoming a republic will not be possible by this year's independence and 60th celebration. Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs Marlene Malihu Fort made the announcement yesterday while addressing the post-cabinet press briefing. The commitment of the Prime Minister to transition Jamaica away from a constitutional monarchy is one that will be kept. But I know persons are wondering whether we will have it done in time for the celebration of Jamaica 60. Unfortunately, the procedures set out in the Constitution will not permit that timing to be met. I know many of you have looked on Barbados and um, are wondering whether it can be done as simply and as easily as it was done there. Well, they have different constitutional provisions. And unlike a Jamaica, they did not require a vote from the people to make that important change in their constitution. Meanwhile, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett during yesterday's post-cabinet press briefing said that 90% of tourism workers that were laid off during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic have returned to work. So the workers of the industry, for example, who were in large numbers, 170,000 of them, and, um, and we lost 130 during the disruption, but 90% of them have come back. But guess what has happened? Those 90 that came back have been drifting out because they are being recruited now by the international world where they are having the same level of disruptions that in supply that we're having. So, so they are after our staff and they're doing a good job at it. We have lost 20,000 tourism workers in the last year and a half to international recruiters. And it's, it's not a painful thought because we train them to be both mobile and portable. So we gave them the certification, they have the skills, so they are now portable. They can work anywhere in the world. So we're happy about that. But what it does is to, is to drive a new challenge for training and development of more and more skills. And we're trying to do that. But in the meantime, we have to be careful because we are at risk of offering a lower level of service if we're not careful and less efficiencies in our system. And that will impact our competitiveness. He also announced that a tourism supply logistics center will be established in efforts to be able to meet the demands of the large amount of tourists visiting Jamaica. So when our agriculturalists have to produce now for the 3 million Jamaicans eating every day, you have to now consider supplying another million at least on a daily basis. Because if you get 3 million visitors, even four, it works out to be about a million per day that you will have to feed. So you now have to produce for 4 million. So that challenges your productive capacity. And so we have to move toward it. And one of the proposals that we're making in this regard is for us to establish a tourism supplies logistics center. And, um, and, that, and the Minister of Finance is very warm to it 
Because what it will do, in addition to everything else, is to provide a new scale of employment for different skill sets. So within the special economic zone, for example, we could have these production centers that are producing um, you know, agro-processed goods, chutneys and jams and jellies and juices and nectars. We could be producing more of the beverage that the industry needs. We could be producing the furniture that the industry needs and so on. And that would then be exported to Jamaica from, from Jamaica because you know that concept. And, 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 and because tourism earns in foreign exchange, it will be able to pay in foreign exchange. So the producers within the free zone would be export producers producing for Jamaica, while at the same time would provide near shore arrangements for our colleagues in the rest of the Caribbean and, and other places.